Imagine you're in a green wall of jungle and everything is quiet until you hear leaves ripping like paper. A silverback steps out of the brush. He isn't sprinting, he isn't roaring, he's just walking. Now picture the moment something truly alarms him. Not an annoyance, not a warning, a real threat. His shoulders rise, his eyes lock, and his arms look suddenly bigger, like someone turned up the volume on his body. And then he does the one thing gorillas almost never do. He stops holding back. Because the scary truth about a gorilla isn't just how strong it is, it's how much strength it normally keeps locked away. So before we talk about what happens when that power finally comes out, we need to talk about the hidden break that keeps it from happening in the first place. The hidden break inside the muscles. A gorilla's strength isn't a simple on and off switch, it's a dimmer. Most days, the gorilla lives on a low setting, walking, climbing, pulling plants, lifting its own heavy body like it weighs nothing. And inside every animal, there's a safety system. Your brain and nerves do not let you use 100% of your power whenever you want. If they did, you'd shred tendons, tear muscles, and grind joints like a machine with no oil. Humans only taste full strength in rare moments when fear spikes and adrenaline floods the system. Suddenly, you grip harder and push harder, not because your muscles grew, but because your brain unlocked more of what was already there. Gorillas have that same kind of governor, but their already there is massive, thicker muscle, heavier bones, arms built for hauling a big body through trees and vines every single day. So when people say a gorilla doesn't know its own strength, what they really mean is this. It almost never recruits everything at once. It doesn't fire every fiber like a full engine blast. And if it ever did, the result wouldn't look like an animal trying hard. It would look like the forest itself losing a fight. Which brings us to the next question. What does full power look like in the wild when nobody is filming? When the forest becomes a gym. To understand gorilla's strength, don't start with fights, start with breakfast. A gorilla eats by pulling and stripping. Thick stems that make a human strain become a casual tug. A branch that feels stuck gets twisted until it snaps, like breaking a dry stick without thinking. And then there's the nest. Every night, gorillas build a sleeping nest out of branches and leaves. It sounds soft, but the building is pure force, bending, weaving, and pushing branches into place with hands that clamp like giant vice grips. Even their show is strength. A silverback can slap the ground so hard the sound rolls through the trees. He can drag and toss branches like oversized toys. He can beat his chest, not to show off, but to send a message that travels through the forest like a drum. Here's the key detail. This is still not full strength. This is daily life. Full strength is what happens when the message doesn't work, when another gorilla refuses to back down. So what happens when two mountains decide there can only be one? When silverbacks collide. Most gorilla conflicts look like theater. Posturing, charging, chest beating, noise. It's two tanks revving their engines, hoping the other one turns away. Because a real clash is risky for both sides. But sometimes it happens. And when it does, it's not a long battle. It's brief, heavy, and shocking. A full-grown silverback can grab, yank, and slam with a speed that doesn't match his calm personality. Picture a heavyweight athlete with a grip that doesn't slip. Now add arms designed for climbing and pulling all day, every day. In a real collision, the goal is simple. End the argument fast. That means wrestling, biting, and using body weight like a falling wall. Even a short struggle can leave serious injuries because the forces are so high. 
That's why gorillas evolved a smarter option. Scare first, fight last. But fight last doesn't mean fight gently. It means the rare moment when the safety comes off. And if you think that force only matters against another gorilla, wait until you see what happens when it meets human-built materials. Steel is not a challenge, it's a suggestion. Zoos don't build gorilla spaces like they build deer spaces, because gorillas test things, not always out of anger, sometimes out of curiosity. There are plenty of reports from keepers of gorillas bending bars, prying at doors, and snapping fixtures that were strong enough for almost anything else. A barrier that feels solid to you can feel flexible to them. And the weird part is this. A gorilla doesn't need a running start. It can generate huge force from a near standstill just by contracting muscles built for explosive pulling. Most of the time, they still don't go all out. They tap the world like it's a toy, and the toy breaks. So if full strength ever met a human barrier, it wouldn't look like a slow bend. It would look like sudden failure, a pop, a rip, a piece of metal giving up. And that leads to the most uncomfortable question people ask. What happens if you're too close when that power turns in your direction? The shove you never forget. In the wild, gorillas avoid trouble. They don't patrol looking for fights. Their first move is distance. Move away, hide, watch. But if someone gets too close, especially to babies, the silverback may charge. And a charge is usually not an attack. It's a warning written in body language. Most charges stop short. The gorilla huffs, beats his chest, slaps the ground, and pulls up at the last second. Sometimes, if the warning is ignored, there's contact, a shove, a grab, a knockdown. Even that restrained contact can feel like getting hit by something heavy and fast. Now imagine that movement with no restraint, not the warning shove, the full shove, the full grab. That's when bones can break. That's when a body can be tossed like it weighs nothing. And the reason that idea is so scary is because it's not a myth. The gorilla has the hardware to do it. It just has the temperament not to. But here's the twist most people miss. Full strength isn't only dangerous for you. It can be dangerous for the gorilla, too. So why doesn't it use it more often? The price of maximum power. Power sounds like a superpower until you pay the bill. A gorilla's muscles are enormous, but tendons and joints still have limits. If a gorilla exploded at full strength again and again, it could damage its own body. A torn tendon in the wild is, isn't a small problem. It can mean you can't climb well, travel well, or protect your group. There's also the social cost. Gorillas live in families. If a silverback turned every disagreement into full force action, he'd injure his own group, and a weaker group is a vulnerable group. So evolution shaped a smarter kind of strength, win without constant fighting. That's why the silverback prefers the loud show, the charge, the chest beat. It's power used like a warning sign, not like a hammer. And when he does use real force, it's usually controlled and brief just enough to end the moment. Now we can answer the question we started with, and it's not just about destruction, it's about restraint. What happens when a gorilla uses its full strength? It doesn't look like an animal trying harder. It looks like the rules around it bending. Wood becomes fragile, vegetation becomes paper, a barrier becomes temporary, and a human body becomes dangerously breakable. But the most remarkable part is how rare it is, because the gorilla's greatest power isn't what it can unleash, it's what it chooses to keep caged. In a world where it could dominate almost anything nearby, it survives by being calm, by being patient, by using only what it needs. So the next time you see a silverback sitting quietly, chewing leaves, looking almost bored, remember what you're really watching, not a beast dreaming of violence, a giant carrying a storm and choosing not to let it out.